So in the second part of this segment, I'm going to elaborate on the weak localization phenomenon and in particular, we'll discuss in more detail the self-crossing trajectories that are responsible for it and uh, in particular, we'll identify the physical circumstances uh, under which they're actually important. And this discussion is going to uh, be under the title I put here, Quantum Corrections to Diffusion. But before going back to these quantum corrections that we already uh, mentioned in the previous video, let me remind you what classical diffusion uh, actually is. Actually, the phenomenon of diffusion you can observe at home by performing a rather simple experiment. If you put a droplet of a dye in water and watch it uh, spread out with time, so this evolution of this droplet, time evolution, spreading out of this droplet is going to be described by the uh, diffusion equation uh, presented here with some diffusion coefficient d. So, uh, but the phenomenon of diffusion and the diffusion equation itself are, of course, much more general than uh, this particular uh, physical realization. And they happen whenever we have uh, a, a large number of particles uh, experiencing a random walk. So random walk is, uh, if you can, you can think about it as particle uh, which moves uh, every time step, it moves in a certain direction, it can go up, it can go right, it can go up, it can go down, it can go left, up, etc, etc. And so at each moment of time, uh, there is a probability, equal probability to go in any, in any direction. And so uh, if a lot of such particles are put together, they, uh, if, and if you look at those particles from a large length scale, so their density, uh, the evolution of their density is going to be described by this equation. And so here rho is in general a, a function of a position and time. So how it is relevant to the uh, previous discussion about electrons uh, moving in the metal. So there, uh, as we mentioned, so the uh, disorders, some imperfections in the metal play the role of scatterers that somehow randomize the electron trajectories and so we can think about electrons experiencing this random walk. And since there are many, many such electrons uh, in a piece of metal, so if we want to describe their density, uh, the density is going to follow uh, the uh, uh, diffusion equation. So another interpretation of the diffusion equation is that this raw is actually a probability density of finding a particular uh, random a walking particle in a certain moment of time, at a certain moment of time, in a certain position in space. So there is a probabilistic interpretation of this equation, if you want. Now, another comment I would like to make about this equation is that actually, in some sense, it looks similar to the Schrodinger equation in quantum mechanics. So uh, if we were to put uh, um, an imaginary constant i here, which we don't have to put, but if we were to imagine that some imaginary time, so, and instead of the coefficient d, we would have had, let's say, minus h squared over 2m, then this uh, equation would have become uh, a free Schrodinger equation of a free particle for the wave function. So, uh, th so, this is a purely mathematical analogy, I should say, but this mathematical analogy in certain cases actually goes a long way and allows us to uh, calculate things that otherwise are very, would have been very difficult to calculate. So um, at this stage, however, we don't want necessarily to involve any of this analogy. Instead, instead, let me focus on the question uh, of relevance to the phenomenon of weak localization that I mentioned, uh, namely on the self-crossing trajectories. And here I'm talking about self-crossing trajectories of uh, some diffusive particles. So let's say, so here actually what I mean is that there is some small length scale at which particle diffuses around, but as a result, in the realization of this random walk, it may lead to this self-crossing trajectory. And um, so from the perspective of this uh, crossing point, what it actually means is that uh, I'm asking the question of what is the probability for a particle to return to the same point where it started. So let's say I set an initial condition for my density at t equals zero to be uh, a delta function in space. So delta function, very sharply localized uh, density in a, the vicinity of a particular point. Now, it turns out that one can actually solve uh, exactly the diffusion equation with this initial condition. It's actually called the Green function. Uh, and this fundamental solution, the general solution uh, to the uh, diffusion equation is uh, written here. So here again, R uh, denotes the coordinate in space, T is time, D is the diffusion coefficient. And this small d uh, denotes the dimensionality of space. So it can be either one-dimensional space or three-dimensional space or two-dimensional space.
and um, in order to for us to find the probability uh, to return to the origin let's say we have we are looking for the probability of a self-crossing trajectory which starts from r equals zero and goes back to uh, r equals zero so it means that we have to set r to zero in this ex expression or set expo exponential to one and that's what we're going to get for the probability of self-intersection so again what this guy implies is that if we take a random walking particles put it by hand in the origin and let it random walk so this guy gives us the probability of it to return to the vicinity the probability density more precisely to re return to the vicinity of this point in the time t so now let us recall uh, about why we were talking about these self-crossing trajectories so the context in which they appeared was uh, the uh, diffusion of electrons uh, in a metal and we wanted to see uh, again we wanted to find the probability for an electron to diffuse from an initial point uh, to some final point and uh, there are many different trajectories that achieve that so and we uh, focused on the quantum terms the quantum interference terms where different trajectories l1 not equal to l2 would interfere with one another and the interference term was this uh, cosine of the difference in length between two given trajectories uh, times p fermi the typical momentum of an electron divided by h bar and the statement was unless l1 was actually equal to l2 uh, this interference term would kill each other or average each other to zero because you will get just a collection of positive and negative random numbers and on the average you will get zero but for the special kinds of terms where you can go uh, clockwise or counterclockwise around a certain trajectory this delta l here would be zero and consign of zero is equal to one so we'll get a prescribed uh, contribution from these guys and so what we're trying to figure out now is how uh, probable it is for us to actually get uh, this self-crossing trajectory at all and this uh, is determined by this equation but this guy uh, tells us this probability density to return to, to an original point in a particular time t while what we're what we're interested in is any self-intersection it doesn't have to be achieve, uh, occur necessarily in this particular time t it has to occur at some point so in order to calculate the total probability which i will denote as p subtotal i have to integrate this expression over time from some minimal t to some maximal t so in here i should mention that i'm dropping the overall coefficients i'm not keeping track of the coefficients I'm just focusing on the most important terms. Now, the minimal time here is the minimal time that the diffusion equation is able to resolve. Being an approximation, it cannot describe the motion shorter in time than the uh, consecutive collisions, let's say, of the electron uh, between uh, two impurities. So this guy is of the order tau, which was actually introduced in the beginning of the previous video. But I should mention that it's actually not important. What it actually is, it it is only important that there is some cutoff. On the other hand, if there is no dephasing processes, if there is, you know, the phase quantum mechanical phase is perfectly preserved, then uh, there is no maximum cutoff. So this guy actually goes to infinity, and uh, uh, therefore the integral that we actually have is an integral from some tau to infinity of dt t to the power d over two. And this integral we can now easily calculate and what is extremely important what is crucial is that this integral is finite if uh, we are in three-dimensional space in which we live but it's infinite it's equal to infinity if we're in uh, one or two dimensions so uh, physically it implies uh, the following so that if we uh, start let's say imagine you're in a spaceship and you start, you're, you're sort of flying around in a completely random directions in three dimensions so uh, this result tells us that they are gonna, uh, you're not gonna, you're gonna be lost. You're not never gonna return to the point where you started from. On the other hand, if you start walking around in a city, in a town, you, in a city you don't know, and uh, you walk uh, randomly long enough, you are actually guaranteed to return to the vicinity of the point where you started. From the point of view of the electrons, so this result uh, implies that if we have a motion of electrons in uh, one and two dimensions. So there will be uh, an infinite number of self-crossing trajectories and the probability of self-crossing is going to be equal to one. So this term is actually going to measure enormously at low temperatures and uh, uh, they're going to blow up and lead to localization 
uh, in uh, in low dimensions and this is actually what happens so if we now actually think about the physical consequences of course again so this in principle everything I'm talking about here is a rather complicated uh, theory so if we were to study it in full details but uh, I just basically want to uh, maybe I will leave you know this result here the total probability of uh, self intersection uh, is really the key the reason for this uh, for this video is just to give you this uh, result essentially what it tells us in conjunction with the path integral argument and some intuitive arguments is that in low dimensions the electrons are going to get localized at low temperatures they're going to tend to return to the same point and this uh, localization is going to be a consequence of the uh, wave nature of particles from the experimental point of view what it actually means is that if you perform a measurement of let's say resistance which is one of conductivity as a function of temperature so at high temperature where uh, various effects uh, disturb the phase so this quantum interference phenomena are basically unimportant whether or not the trajectories cross or not doesn't doesn't play any role so you will have some resistance and it will slowly actually decrease but then at some point it will actually shoot up and become an insulator now in this qualitative curve so this part of the curve corresponds to the uh, weak localization phenomenon that we uh, have been uh, discussing and this part is the classical Drude uh, conductivity which goes back to more than 100 years ago so and the prediction is that in one and two dimensions per this argument these quantum interference terms are going to take over and you're going to get, get an insulator while in three dimensions actually what's expected is that you're going to remain a metal and it's just, the resistivity is going to saturate in 3d to some finite value and this is indeed what happens so uh and there do exist uh, quasi one-dimensional and quasi two-dimensional materials let's say nanowires and so-called uh, semiconductor heterostructures uh two-dimensional films where uh, this uh behavior uh, is observed so I should emphasize again that the full theory of this localization is an extremely complicated theory and we just got a flavor of it so hopefully uh, but it's not the full story and uh, interestingly enough what I told you about here actually this weak localization is a precursor to a different phenomenon which is actually called strong localization uh, for which uh, Phil Anderson uh, professor emeritus at Princeton uh, got his Nobel Prize in 1977 so we obviously don't have time now to discuss in any detail this very interesting and uh, complicated theory of Phil Anderson but let me just mention that next week we're gonna uh, go back to standard quantum mechanics and one problem we're gonna solve is a particle in a potential well and uh, in this problem we're gonna see that the particle when put in a potential well gets localized by the well with some discrete energy levels not continuum of energy levels but discrete levels and so uh, the essence of the theory of Anderson, if it can be summarized in a few seconds, is that in a random landscape of such a potential wells, so this is, uh, let's say, V of R, so the energy levels that electrons are going to acquire are not going to match each other. And so they're not going to be able to move, hop from uh, well to well because of the energy conservation. And this would completely uh, suppress the conductivity and this will lead to the strong localization. So that's the only thing I'm going to say uh, and uh, next week we're going to study, actually we're going to study simpler uh, phenomena using the Schrodinger formulation, in particular uh, the appearance of such discrete energy levels.